Hello and welcome everyone, this is Kalabovich coming to you with another episode of Deck Check, or rather two mini episodes inside of one huge episode. That is because today I will be talking about something I'm calling the Belcher Project. Uh, what is the Belcher Project? Well, this is another take of mine on a Johnny card from the Shadow of the Spire uh, mini expansion. Uh, Ordnance, Ordnance Scavenger. That's a unit that you're gonna see in a moment that in my iterations of the deck wants to self-mill you for your whole deck. And what do you do then? Then you kill the opponent with an OTK combo. And that reminds me of, or had reminded me already, of a card called Goblin Charbelcher back in Magic the Gathering. That was an artifact that uh, you targeted usually your opponent and it dealt a damage equal to the number of cards you have revealed from the top of your deck until you reveal the land. And you were using this in combination with either cards that uh, removed all lands from your deck like Mana Severance or in decks that included just several basics and you just tried to grab them out of your deck as soon as possible. But this is going to be in Eternal, not in Magic the Gathering. So an Eternal, but uh, it reminds me of, of Belcher so much that I even named the deck. So anyway, long story short, here's uh, the Belcher Project. Which is Belcher Project? And then Aurelian Belcher Project. Stay tuned. Now the basic combo aspect of the Belcher project is going to be the same in both iterations of the deck and this video uh, in this video I will first show you the Winches Belcher project then two games then the Aurelian Belcher project how it differs from this one from this deck list and two games from that one as well before finishing out off with some conclusions and final thoughts so the combo of what I'm calling once again the Belcher project is actually the Ordnance Scavenger means to an end project and that is Ordnance Scavenger, a 6-cost Rakano 5-5 Gunslinger that says Summon. Discard cards from your deck until you discard 5 power cards, then draw a weapon from your void you discard it this way. So uh, this is one of the cards from Shadow of the Spire, what I call the Johnny Expansion for Eternal. Uh, and while trying to, to do something with this deck, I, in the past I tried doing an iteration with Ordnance Scavenger self-milling for some cards and then playing Unlock the Vault, getting a Relic Weapon, a non-weapon Relic and a non-Relic Weapon. Wait, a Relic, a Relic Weapon and a non... Wait, wait. A Relic Weapon, a non-weapon Relic and a non-Relic Weapon. Okay, okay, finally got it. Uh, that didn't work, long story short, uh, so I thought to myself, okay, let's try to uh, use this card to the max, and that is by discarding your whole deck. Now the question is, what can you do in Eternal if you don't have, uh, if you don't have your deck, if you have your whole deck in your void, and you still have a turn to go before you, well, just die to, due to not having any cards in your, in your deck? And, uh, well, there are some... There are some options. I even saw uh, a different version of this deck, a deck on Ordnance Scavenger, but I have done something a bit more meme -y, and that is memes to an end, or rather means to an end. Now, this is a three cost shadow relic uh, that says Life Force. When you gain health, discard that many cards from your deck. Then, if you have no cards in your deck, sacrifice means to an end to deal 25 damage to the enemy player. Now this means you have to uh, you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get all the ducks in a row and get things going and just kill the opponent with means to an end. But if you manage somehow to empty your deck with Ordnance Scavenger and you have means to an end in play, then you have to gain at least one point of health. Then means to an end as life force ability triggers. You discard no cards because you have no cards left in your deck. Then you sacrifice this relic and you deal 25 damage to the enemy player. But the enemy player cannot have an, an Aegis on their avatar and they have to have at max 25 health. So once again, a lot of hoops to jump through uh, for this to work, but it has worked for me in the past. Uh, okay, but so, so that is the theory of the combo. But there is one more thing you need to know about getting Ordnance Scavenger going because Ordnance Scavenger doesn't say summon, discard your deck but says discard cards from your deck until you discard five power cards. Now, how to discard your whole deck with Ordnance Scavenger? In Eternal Card Game, there is no such thing as just putting five or six or seven power cards into your deck 
and thus uh, discarding all of them of Ordnance Scavenger. That's unfortunately not how it works. The deck building requirements in Eternal Card Game is, are that you have to have between a third and two thirds of power cards in your deck. And that means in a 75 card deck, you have to have at least 25 power cards. So you're not discarding your whole deck, right? Well, there is a bit of a way of, uh, of working around that. And this is something I've already used, had already used in the past in a Glimpse the Possibilities deck. And that is having a lot of transmute powers. Uh, so you have your standards and your monuments. And what they say is transmute five, which means when you reach five maximum power before playing this, this power card, this power card transforms into a new card. And some of them transform into tactics, which are spells. And some of them transform into, well, not monuments, but units. Just general five costing units. In this case, it's a Puma. And that's it. So this deck is running 12 standards and four uh, Amethyst monuments. Uh, so that's 16 cards. And the nine remaining cards are sigils. So if you reach at least five maximum power, and in order to play Ordnance Scavenger, you have to have at least six. So yes check. Uh, you usually have several of those power cards already in play. And if you have at most four power cards, sorry, four, four sigils left in your deck, then you're milling your whole deck. And that's the precipice of both versions of this deck. That is having a lot of transmute power, being able to play Ordnance Scavenger in a way or another. And in the other deck, it's definitely or another. Uh, and then having means to an end in play and gaining some health. I'll, once again, a lot of hoops to go through, and this is not a true competitive deck, but this is something you might have some fun with. So what we are doing here is having a lot of cards that get sigils from your deck, like four copies of Seek Power, draw a sigil of your choice from your deck, four copies of Winchest Cargo, draw a Fire, Justice or Shadow sigil from your deck, and we are running all three. Transmute, when you have two of each influence, you, you transmute this into Winchest Contraband, which is not a great card, but this is an alternative win condition if things do not go your way. You also have four copies of Lost Scroll, play a Justice Sigil or Shadow Sigil from your deck depleted, which also ramps you up, uh, hastens your, uh, your power buildup. It is a two cost Argent Port spell. Uh, and you have two copies of Vara's Favor, the uh, two cost shadow spell, lifesteal, deal one damage, draw a shadow sigil from your deck. So we have 14 different ways of, get, of grabbing sigils from your deck. Not many of them draw your fire sigil, so you have to uh, be wary about that. And the rest of this is just trying to control the board, stalling the opponent, trying for them not to win before you can assemble your combo. Uh, so let me go through this once again. Oh, just one more thing. One more piece of the combo that combos with Ordnance Scavenger, that is Life Drinker. Because Ordnance Scavenger says, after you discard your whole deck, then you get to draw a weapon from your void you discarded this way. So what I was looking for in weapons is uh, a weapon that gains you health. And the easiest way to go for it is Life Drinker, the three cost 2-2 two -two Shadow Relic weapon that on summon you gain life seal this turn, because even if you have life seal, you don't have to kill anything the opponent has, you just have to deal two damage with life seal, gain that two points of health for means to an end to trigger. So let me get through this deck card by card now. So you have four copies of Blight Moth, the, uh, the Kirin that hates uh, a lot of, uh, that sorry, eats a lot of Grenadin, Yetis, etc., etc. This is a two cost double shadow one to flying Kirin that on summon gives an enemy unit and each enemy that shares a type with it, and type is something you can see at the bottom here, so for, for Blight Moth it's Kirin. It also has Corrupted 3, which means after this one, this unit dies, you get to you get a Blight Moth Shade in play that you can later pay 3 and sacrifice to once again uh, make uh, some enemy units smaller. Okay, this also gives you two bodies which means you play this, you hopefully kill some opposing units, you block with it, you have then a shade, which can block for another turn. So this is slowing the opponent down as much as possible. Next up, we have not four, but eight merchants, because means to an end is the part of the combo we are running in the market, and market is very important in this deck. So four hidden road smugglers, the three cost two, two Argent port merchants with lifesteal, 
uh, that on summon you get to swap a card from your hand with a shadow or justice card in the market and all of these are shadow aside from one that is justice and fire but i'm going to get to the market in the end at the end and for copies of current merchants these can only grab you four of these eight cards but you have to have all of your merchants have to be shadow because well you need to grab those means to an end and why am i running one copy of means in the market instead of four copies main deck well because uh, there is no way for you to search specifically for relics in these colors you can search for relic weapons with dragon forge or weapons in general and units with rise to the challenge but you cannot search non uh, non-weapon relics like like means to an end for that you have to be in aurelian and that's the other iteration of the deck that i'm going to get to later in this video uh, so this allows me to have eight copies or rather eight copies of cards that give me access to that means to an end also means that means to an end is slower because you have to pay three for the merchant than to be able to pay three for means to an end itself next up we have four copies of vara vengeance seeker the four cost double shadow three three lifesteal scion that says nothing can have an aegis which helps with the what if the opponent has face aegis part of the whole deal also, on summon, the enemy player must choose, sacrifice a unit, or give Vara plus two, plus two, and deadly. And this is another unit with lifesteal, because remember, on the turn that you play Ordnance Scavenger and you mill yourself, and you have a means to an end in play, you have to attack with a lifesteal unit, or in other way, gain some health. So, four copies of Hidden Road Smuggler and four copies of Vara Vengeance Seeker. Yeah, those are, uh, aside from being control and anti sorry, being anti-aggro, uh, these are just ways for you to trigger the whole combo. Four copies of Ordnance Scavenger, easy peasy. One copy of Life Drinker, well, that's just a safety valve if you have nine power and you have six to play Ordnance Scavenger and then you have to pay three for Life Drinker and then you have to attack with it. And that's it. Now, as far as the controlling parts of the part of the deck goes, you have four copies of Defiance, the one cost Justice Fast spell that either kills an enemy attacking enemy unit with cost three or less or, or stuns an attacking enemy unit with cost four or more it doesn't work on enemy units costing four or more with endurance that's it and three copies of defile now i've included defile as the other removal of choice uh, these are actually just uh, defiance copies uh, five through seven this is a two cost shadow fast spell that just kills an enemy unit with cost three or less then you get to steal it and put it into your void now, Defiles are here instead of Annihilates or Slays or Desecrates or other cards like that, mainly because the then steal it and put it into your Void card, as a part of the effect of the card, uh, tries to go through your opponent's face Aegis, and, well, it can, it can just grab their face Aegis. And that is another way for you to, to get rid of it, plain and simple. Aside from that, we have uh, eight copies of Seek Power and or Winchest Cargo, four copies of Call the Deck, the two cost shadow spell that says draw one of your one of the top three cards of your deck, put the rest on the bottom. This is obviously searching for the combo, whether it is another merchant or ordnance scavenger. Next up, we have four copies of Devour, the two cost shadow fast spell that says sacrifice a unit to draw two cards and gain two health. Now, this, the inclusion of Devour in this deck is also very important because it uh, plays two roles, at least. One of them is uh, draw two cards, and for the sacrifice unit part, that is one of the reasons why, why uh, this deck is running Blight Moths, because we can sacrifice Blight Moth and then we can sacrifice Blight Moth Shade. But also, Devour gains you two health. So if you have eight power, you can play Ordnance Scavenger, mill your deck, and then you can Devour that Scavenger to gain two health, and trigger uh, trigger your uh, means to an end. Plain and simple. Uh, four copies of Lost Scroll and two copies of Vara's Favor. Now, ways of proccing or uh, triggering uh, means to an end in this deck are Hidden Road Smuggler or Vara Vengeance Seeker attacking with Lifesteal, Life Drinker, you attacking with Lifesteal, or you playing Devour or Vara's Favor. So Vara's Favor here has a couple of roles. It can get rid of opposing face Aegis. It draws you one of the four Shadow Sigils from your deck. It also deals one damage with Life Steel, which triggers means to an end. So all in all, a very good card. Uh, you could think about having more of uh, more copies of Vara's Favor instead of, for example, Defiles uh, or Blight Moths but, or Devours, but that just depends on your play experience. 
Also, when it comes to gaining health, you gotta remember that you are running for Crown Watch standards that later turn into Crown Watch tactic, which give a, one of your units plus three, plus three in the life seal this turn. So this is another way for you to, to gain some health, but you have to attack with that unit. And you also have four Amethyst Monuments that turn into Pumas, which are five costing four, four units with lifesteal once again. So you either have to attack or you have to play Devour or Vara's Favor to trigger, uh, to trigger means to an end. And as the power base goes, we have nine sigils, 12 standards, four monuments. Uh, you also have to remember while playing this deck uh, to pace yourself. Uh, you have to know at which point, at which exact point, your standards and monuments are going to turn into tactics and pumas, because you have to get up to six power for Ordnance Scavenger and possibly eight power for Ordnance Scavenger and playing Varus Favor or Devour, because that's usually how this combo goes out. Now for the market. Now market play, uh, market is very specific here because most of it it's combo and the remaining Aramont's Designs card is anti-aggro once again. So as far as combo goes, Harbinger's Bite is a one cost shadow slow spell that says lifesteal, nightfall, deal two damage to the enemy player. So not only does it uh, allow you to get the opponent if they gained one or two points of health and are up to 26 or 27, but also this, uh, this triggers means to an end. So this is one of the cheaper ways of doing it. The other was condemned, but that deals only one damage. Nightfall lethal isn't going to be lethal as someone in Twitch chat suggested, uh, because well, if you don't kill your opponent, if, you're, if you've self milled yourself, uh, is, I don't know if that's a phrase. Uh, if you if you self milled your entire deck, uh, then well you just die at the end of your turn. So there is no nightfall damage. You gotta remember that. Next up, Shattered Hopes. There's a one cost uh, Argent board spell that says choose a card with cost four or more from the enemy player's hand. They discard it. But uh, this card is here in the market for its decimate effect. Shattered Hopes can't be negated or stopped by Aegis. If the enemy player has an Aegis, take it. So this is your way of getting through an opposing Aegis, plain and simple. Aramod's Designs kill each unit with cost two or less. This is a two cost shadow spell. This is for you to not die to overly aggro decks that rely on one and two cost, like Combray aggro or uh, a drone room or something like that. Means to an end, this is the combo piece, the resistance. And uh, one copy of Rise to the Challenge, the four cost Rakano spell. This one can only be gotten with uh, with Hidden Road Smugglers. This says draw a unit or weapon of your choice from your deck. It gets plus two attack. And this is to get Ordnance Scavenger. So you have eight ways of getting means to an end. You have four ways plus eight ways to getting because, well, Rise to the Challenge draws your Ordnance Scavenger. This is slow, but this is reliable. And you also have Call the Deck and Devour uh, and thinning your deck of out of your sigils uh, to to be more mm, for you to be able to get the combo going to assemble the combo a bit better. Unfortunately, this deck does not work each and every time, but I did manage to get it going in the very first game I played with it. But uh, let me not get ahead of myself. Uh, let me just show you a couple of games with this list, and then after those two games, I will be back here. Uh, to tell you a bit about the other iteration of the Belcher project, the Aurelian Belcher project. Yes, Aurelian doesn't include Rakano, but it somehow also plays Ordnance Scavenger and means to an end. But, well, just take a look at those two games and then we will be back here. Now you have to remember that my work on the Winchest Belcher project and the Aurelian Belcher project did take a while, so what you're seeing here is the earliest version of the deck, and it was also running cards like four copies of Harsh Rule main deck, and it was running, for example, Token of Ambition in the market, and some other cards that you might have not seen in the deck that I have explained. But uh, in its essence, it is the same one, and the version that uh, you can just get from Eternal Warcry when you click on the link somewhere in the description of the video is, in my opinion at least, a more uh, straightforward one. So here we have a ton of power, and that is very good. Again, something that looks like Huru Control, and that is also very good. And slowly, steadily, we are uh, playing out some power. Next, we also have to play Shugo, Shugo Standard, and uh, one of the 
probably the tactic not the monument so that we are able to to get as much power as possible this version was also running ikaria valkyrie captains and a bit more uh, justice sigils as additional ways of getting sigils from your deck and ramping up instead of Vara's favors but once again the main thought of the deck was the same now here i could play a justice sigil and use ikaria but i wanted to uh, but i wanted to uh, to keep all the cards here and well i wanted to play one of these uh, cards that would later be well immaterial rather i mean another puma another crouch tactic they are rather immaterial uh, the opponent has built up what looks like just ixton unitless or ixton control deck and well unless they grab they have face aegis we rather do not care what they are doing or they well we hope they do not gain health uh, or face aegis uh, defiance stops this unit and well we are not that sad because we have another ikaria valkyrie, cap valkyrie captain and we're grabbing another sigil from our deck we are up to eight max power so if everything goes our way we will be able to uh, to defeat this one ikaria the liberator okay we can do something like play a blight moth on it to get well we could go crown Witch tactic on that ikaria to get rid of its face aegis and then play harsh rule but we are going to play blight moth get rid of that aegis and then play harsh rule so i'm leaving crown Witch tactic for later uh, so yes, getting rid of that face, uh, sorry, that Ikaria Aegis and Harshul. Old Ikaria won against new Ikaria, but the newest Ikaria is nowhere to be seen. And obviously, when you're playing your first Ikaria, then the other, then the ne very next card on top of your deck is the other Ikaria that you just wore right. So yes, we are taking 10 damage here. And well, I need to draw something good like this Ordnance Scavenger. And that also means that I will just play my Hidden Road Smuggler, trade Puma for uh, for the uh, means to an end, play it. And the next turn, if the opponent doesn't do anything uh, to us, we can play Ordnance Scavenger and devour it. So that is very good. Now, uh, at this point, I did make a small mistake because opponent is going to attack and then later play hailstorm yes sure and then they are playing hailstorm here i should have saved my unit with crown watch tactic but i unfortunately i clicked on okay because then i can ordinance scavenger attack if the opponent does something then i can devour so i have another way of triggering the combo but here as you can see uh no stops we are milling our whole deck we are getting that life drinker, but that doesn't matter. We are devouring the unit, gaining two health, proccing means to an end, dealing 25 damage to the unsuspecting opponent, and voila, first victory. Now over to the second victory uh, game. All right, game number two, or well, three technically, with the Winchest Belcher project. And this hand looks rather robust. We have... Well, four power at least. We have two merchants, so we have means to an end. We just need to grab the fire, uh, some fire influence, but we can do it with the second merchant because that one grabs us, uh, uh, for example, token, token of ambition. And looks like stone scar. Stone scar so far. I believe uh, the first one I'm going to play is the Karendon Merchant uh, because, well, it's more probable for them to kill the first one than the second one. I mean, for them to kill both, actually. Uh, but if I have a means of gaining health in play, that makes my trip that much easier. And I was thinking whether to play Crown Watch uh, Standard or not, but in the end I decided to take it out to the market, grab Token of Ambition and play it for the Red Influence, for the Fire Influence. Uh, next turn is probably going to be Smuggler grabbing means to an end, next playing means to an end, and next one uh, playing Ordnance Scavenger. Well, that's at least the theory here. Uh, harsh rule, well, it is harsh, and it, it is a rule, and I do not want the opponent to, to do anything here. Also, next turn we're drawing a card, doesn't matter what card it is, we're going to play Hidden Road Smuggler anyway, and Justice Sigil and means to an end. I was just counting how many sigils I have already played. So uh, Winchest Cargo, uh, yeah, seems I am grabbing this uh, so as to have 
uh, a smaller amount of uh, a lower amount of sigils in my deck. Okay, we're not blocking. We need to keep this unit healthy and alive. Otherwise, everything falls to ruin. Also, remember in this version, I don't have a one cost spell in the market that gains health. So yes, means to an end. There you go, opponent. Please do not kill my unit. Well, we are at a robust 20, so I'm hoping I will be able to, to get through this somehow. But if they kill my unit, then, well, I'm probably just dead. I mean, in response, I can devour it and try to draw into something, but it's going to be much more difficult. Saturary Maiden is not a huge problem because we just care about gaining two health, not about opponent, uh, well, transforming our unit. So I opted to go for Winchester Cargo playing that power, just in case uh, I miscounted something. Playing Ordnance Scavenger, self-milling the whole deck, attacking for two, and if the opponent doesn't have uh, Blazing Salvo or something like that, we are gaining two health, we are proccing means to an end, and we are dealing 25 to the opponent. Ah, oh, what is it? Is this going to be, or is this not going to be it? They are blocking here, obviously. We are gaining health, we are dealing 25. We, we don't care about cudgel or taking one hit. We just care about 25 to the opponent's face. Voila, second game won here. Now let's head back uh, to the studio and let me tell you about the Aurelian uh, Belcher project. Now if you thought the previous deck version deck was crazy, wait till you get a load of this one. All right, so let's let's get crazy and let's crank it up a notch to Aurelian Belcher project. All right, so the basis of this deck is theoretically the same. So we have uh, 16 transmute powers, 9 non-transmute powers. We have Ordnance Scavenger and Means to an End. This time Means to an End is main deck. And not market because we can search for it. And the basic colors are Aurelian, which means Time, Primal, Shadow. So Rakano is totally out of the picture. And what I wanted to do for this one is to have Ordnance Scavenger somehow in my void and get, then get it back with Haunting Scream, because Haunting Scream just costs three. And then later you can use your remaining power to, to gain health. But Haunting Scream, the three costing uh, Felm spell, only plays a unit with cost five or less from your void. The unit gets charged and flying and you get to sacrifice it at the end of the turn. So first, there is another hoop. You have to lower Ordnance Scavenger's cost by one, at least one. And there are some ways of doing that. And one of them is playing Spire Shadows <laughs> from your market. This deck is uh, running eight merchants once again. And if you grab Spire Shadows from your market, this is a two cost Zen and slow spell. You get to swap the attack and cost of each unit in your deck. That means that Ordnance Scavenger turns into a five cost six five. And that also means you can Haunting Scream it. But uh, Spire Shadows is for the early game. Later in the game, if you already have an Ordnance Scavenger in, uh, in hand or in the Void, you can grab Sauropod Wrangler, that is a two cost, a very fragile two cost, two two time explorer, that says your units with five attack or more cost one less. And last we checked, yes, Ordnance Scavenger costs, uh, has at least five attacks. So it's uh, Wrangler turns uh, Scavenger into a five cost five five. And that also triggers your Haunting Scream. You can probably uh, get it, go away with Spire Shadows and just go for Sauropod Wrangler, uh, but that is two for Wrangler and three for Haunting Scream, uh, but uh, then Sauropod Wrangler is uh, vulnerable to any fast removal, so there is that. Anyway, so what this deck does is, once again, you, you want to play some power by grabbing it with Seek Power Petition, this time it's Petition instead of Aurelian Cargo. Uh, and that's it when it comes to grabbing non-transmutable uh, non power from your deck. Or you just draw some cards with Honor of Claws. Uh, you get Means to an End into play. Uh, you have four copies of it main deck. 
or you have you can search for it with display of knowledge the three cost aurelian display that has the modes of put an attacking enemy unit on the bottom of the enemy deck so that is removal draw a relic from your deck so that is searching for piece of the combo or give one of your units plus two attack and quick draw which doesn't come into effect in this version of the deck <sighs> all right so units oh wait before units you have to have a way aside from being able to play means to an end being able to put ordnance scavenger in play and mill your whole deck and that is taking power out from your deck you have to gain some health and one of the ways of gaining health is temple scribe and these are here instead of devourers because well it's half a devour but you're only running 16 units in the deck and devourers usually would be just dead cards and this is a two cost double time cleric a one one but that doesn't matter summon you gain one health and draw a card so you both dig deeper through your deck and you trigger a means to an end next up you have four copies of aurelian merchant the time one the three cost uh, time 03 merchant that gives you plus one max power and four copies of Eben, Eben Dune smuggler the three cost xenon merchant with two that is a two two unit with ambush so you can play it at the end of your opponent's turn and these grab you spire shadows or other pieces of the combo and last but not least four copies of ordnance scavenger uh, in this one you, it is a bit more difficult for you to grab Ordnance Scavenger because, well, you do have four copies of it main deck, but you have no ways of searching for it. That is the biggest uh, downside of this one, but I believe this version is more robust and it has more going for it. And for me, it is my preferred version of a Belcher Project deck. Now, given that we are playing four displays of knowledge, which can... Uh, look for some relics for us then aside from just having four means to an end as the combo finisher we are also running one copy of ancient bubble a one cost time relic that says once per turn you may pay one to gain one health obviously paying one to trigger life force on means to an end one copy of life drinker for the ordnance scavenger mills it and you get to draw a piece of the combo but also you have one copy of memento mori the four cost time uh, relic that gives you plus one max power but also on summon you gain one influence of each type and this enables you to play ordnance scavenger from your hand even if you even if you are not running any sources of the rakano power well we are but i'll get to that in a moment in the attachment section you also have three copies of permafrost the one cost primal curse that stuns the cursed unit for as long as it is cursed once again doesn't work on endurance and this is to slow opposing units down uh, and as far as searching uh, through your deck and grabbing <clears throat> sorry and getting and getting your sigils out you have four copies of seek power and draw a sigil of your choice from your deck but this deck aside from 16 transmute powers is not running nine sigils it's running seven sigils three times three primal because we have doubles here and doubles here and one shadow but also petition the two cost slow spell allows you to draw any power card of your choice from your deck and that means we can have one crest of glory in this deck yes this is the remaining piece of the puzzle that gives us the Rakano influence the piece de resistance here because well as you're gonna see it comes into play more often than you might think it gives you fire and justice which is both of them you need to play ordnance scavenger comes into play depleted allows you to scout great but also another combo power that you can grab with petition is sacred steel the power then doesn't give you any influence but when you play it you gain one health and that triggers life force and that triggers means to an end plain and simple and tricky uh, aside from that four copies of display of knowledge four copies of hailstorm the three cost double primal spell that deals three damage to each unit and this is your stopping power against aggressive decks that just flood the board with stuff and things if you don't uh, find yourself playing against a lot of aggressive decks you can just swap four copies of hailstorm to four copies of uh, turn to seed especially if you are uh, playing against more mid-range decks more often than not four copies of haunting scream as the as the uh, you searching for ordnance scavenger but also remember means to an end has the life force effect of when you gain health discard that many cards from your deck so if you already have means to an end 
in a play and you play a temple scribe you're drawing a card sorry you're gaining a health uh, and in effect you're drawing a card and you're self milling a card don't remember in which order but both of these things happen and we have four copies of honor of claws this is the four cost primal slow spell that draws you three cards and you get to discard a card you might want to think about including more uh, more draw here like herald songs instead of some of the haunting screams because in this version haunting scream does not come into effect as much as i wanted it to because we don't have that many effects that discard ordnance scavenger for you so here in this version honestly i'm playing ordnance scavenger from my hand more often than from the void but haunting scream and having wrangler or spire shadows for uh, for it is uh, is in theory the way to go here now once again we have 12 standards all standards in the colors in the main colors that we are running and for amethyst monuments because those pumas do have lifesteal seven sigils one crest one sacred seal now as far as the market goes this market should be mainly time and this means uh, we we can uh, we can be running a lot of crazy things and the craziest thing in the market is reap the zero costing time spell that says you gain three health and decimate you gain one influence of each type now if you thought uh, marketing for harbinger's bite in the winchester uh, belcher project was crazy because that dealt two damage to the opponent and uh, was had life seal which gained you two health then uh, winning with reap is even crazier because well you're marketing for a card that costs zero which means you can play ordnance scavenger and on the same turn for zero you can trigger means to an end but also, if you have other ways of gaining health already, but you need to play Ordnance Scavenger from your hand, you can also grab Reap from your market and decimate it to be able to play Ordnance Scavenger, play Ordnance Scavenger, and then, then gain life from just playing a Temple Scribe or Haunting Screaming a Temple Scribe back. You have that as well. Or using Ancient Bubble, for one. So that is another option that is both uh, triggering means to an end and allows you to play Ordnance Scavenger on occasion. Next up, Sauropod Wrangler. This enables you to Haunting Scream for your Scavenger. Spire Shadows enables you to Scream for Scavenger. Also turns Aurelian Merchants into zero costing three threes, which is very good as you're gonna see in one of the games. Uh, next up, Banish. It is a three cost Xenon Fast Spell that either kills an enemy unit or Relic with cost five or less. So this is both removal for units and Relics. But I was thinking of running this junction here as well. Maybe instead of Spire Shadows, I'm just having Wrangler or the other way around instead of Wrangler. I have no idea. This market is not, not big enough for everyone. And last but certainly not least, we have Grasping at Shadows, the five cost double shadow slow spell that plays you a unit from your void. So if you do run up to double shadow because of Memento Mori or having played Monument or Standard before playing Shadow Sigil, then uh, then you can play just your Ordnance Scavenger from your Void without having to Haunting Scream for it. Now this deck is a bit lacking in self-milling prior to Ordnance Scavenger to be able for you to Haunting Scream or Grasping at Shadows it back. Uh, but it had worked for me more often than uh, the Winchester Belcher project. Which doesn't mean it is over 50%. It is a bit lower than that. I, if my calculations are correct, I did win four games and lost six. So it, currently this one is at about 40% win rate, which is much bigger than you would think by just looking at this pile of cards. Anyway, the, the upsides of this version for, uh, over the Winches Belcher project is it is crazier. It is running multiple means to an end, which means uh, you can get the opponent down from more than 25. Uh, and, well, it is much cooler. Let me let me tell you just that it is much cooler than the other one. Not to say that the other one is not. Anyway, this is enough of me talking about the theory of the deck. Let me show you two more games with this version before heading out, uh, heading over to Final Thoughts. All right. First game with the Aurelian Winches project. And one power hand is just not gonna make it. This is much better. We are up to four power and have some stopping power as well with permafrost, and we can draw some cards with Honor of Claws. 
So let's start on one of these power cards and play uh, first. Uh, well, this is, is once again an older version of the deck. So this was running uh, this was running Aurelian Cargos instead of Petitions. And this one was not, not running Crest of Glory and Sacred Seal in place of two of the sigils. Uh, but most of the rest of the deck was uh, was the same, and the idea behind the deck is the same. Pathlighter. So that looks like uh, Karendon Killer Wisps. I still want to play the merch and grab Spire Shadows. This version also was running in the market disjunction instead of Sorbot Wrangler. One is obviously going to play a killer spell on their wisp because, well, the name suggests they are playing killer wisps. Ordnance Scavenger is has been drawn. Unfortunately, Spire Shadows does not affect cards that we have already drawn, so that is a downside. So we would either have to play it via Memento Mori or something like that. Amethyst Monument, yes, I do want to play that. Uh, because, well, we do want to get higher on power. And a 1, and a 2, and a 3. Okay. I think we... Do we need that Ordnance Scavenger or not? I'm not so sure here. Unfortunately, these merchants cannot grab Grasping and Shadows for us. Uh, but before playing them, I have to play Amethyst Monument. Uh, because if I play them, I have plus one max power, and the monument monument instantly turns into the puma, and I don't want the puma right now. I was also thinking whether to play the merchant right now or not, but I opted to save it for a moment still. Uh, uh, to save it for a moment still. Soulbringer brings them back the wisp with killer once again. Yes, we could permafreeze the killer. We could have banish for something as well. Uh, we can't grab grasping at shadows, unfortunately. We can also already play means to an end, because why not? I was thinking what to get from the market, and that Banish has caught my eye for sure. In the end, I opted to wait with the merchants. For when I have more power. Sure. Temple tactic is very interesting here. I once again opted to not do anything because we still have time. We still have a lot of time. We're not under any sort of real pressure from the opponent. I mean, we still have several turns. They are playing Erlum Blade, sacrificing that Pathlighter. Uh, but I just opted to, to go for it, to take all that damage. All right, we do have some options here. Well, there's the Ordnance Scavenger that we would like to discard because we cannot play it yet. Uh, we also have that Temple Tactic that's going to be very handy. We have Banish and Disjunction. And here I was thinking about uh, playing Disjunction under Weapon uh, and also leaving Temple Tactic up. 
We can get rid of the Shadow Sigil for now, I believe. I could also just grab a Reap, so a zero-costing merchant can grab us a zero-costing Reap. We just need the other influence uh, to, uh, to be able to play Ordnance Scavenger, plain and simple. So yes, here I was thinking for a long while, because with the opponent playing a 4-4 Relic weapon, that costs 6. Remember, only when they play it, it costs 4 less. After, after that, it costs much more. That is where this disjunction is going to come in very handy. Otherwise, it would just be banishing. And here, opponent plays Wanted Poster on our unit, because they want to draw some cards. And that is where they will be very sad because they want to kill it and in, in response we're playing Disjunction on it so even if they play another Relic Weapon this turn they cannot attack with it and now they're playing Slay and we can bounce our unit back to our hand we will take 4 damage from Soulbringer but the opponent A is not killing our Aurelian Merchant and B is not uh, uh, is not drawing cards yes, that's what I wanted to say now we did get Memento Mori, so we can now go for uh, Reap, and we have the whole combo assembled in hand, and we do have two 3-3 three, three blockers now. So if the opponent attacks, we just block with one or both of these, and then we can play Ordnance, Scavenger, and Reap for the victory, because the opponent is at 25. Opponent opted to go for uh, Harsh Rule, just to kill everything, so we Ordnance, Scavenger, we mill our whole deck, and then we win by playing Reap. And no one is expecting that, ever. And I was very happy at that moment. But for now, on to game number two. Or game number four if you count all the games in this video. But game number two with the Aurelian uh, Belcher project. Yeah, three power, means to an end, uh, some card draw, a smuggler. What more do we need? Opponent, please send us some help. Cross the forward once again makes me think uh, opponent is going to go for a slower version of a deck getting a time sigil so we can play uh, the smuggler another time sigil that's very good we are playing means to an end because we can might as well get the combo going now you also have to remember how many uh, non-transmutable powers you have played uh, throughout the course of the game. For now it is two and we have a third in hand. And we have to play at least five of the nine. So we have to get at least two more going. Uh, fortunately we can go Honor of Claws. This looks like opponent is going for a rather slower deck. Uh, which means we can just discard one of our permafrost and be good with it good about it tradition chant which means opponent is going for a tradition a tradition deck seek power for another primal we don't need another shadow and I could have gone for another means to an end but in the instead I opted to go for um, uh, to go for honor of claws to draw into more power we can discard the other permafrost, I guess. Or Haunting Scream. I mean, Haunting Scream can also get us a merchant back. And that is a good thing. Right? Right. We can petition next turn for the uh, Crest of Glory, was it? And have our power assembled for, for the Ordnance Scavengers. We do have... 4 out of 9 played already, so if we get that Rakana one, we should be good. 
so this is going to be petition for for that one for the crest of glory and we play crest of glory and we see ancient bubble on the top and we are keeping it on top just in case and i could have played means to an end here but i opted to just wait and have display of either display of knowledge or even dune smuggler left up just in case of some shenanigans and the opponent went to market for bastion of the dawn and is playing an omen sorry a vision of austerity on a relic turning it into an omen of austerity cursed relic that says we cannot play the cursed card which is means to an end fortunately we have a way of going around this by playing even dune smuggler and grabbing banish from the market this is slowing us down and uh if I played the other means to an end, well, then none of that would have been necessary. And here I play, I play that. I, I play the other means to an end. I play a power and I play the ancient bauble. Plain and simple. And we have two ordnance scavengers left in hand and a display of knowledge if we need to, if the opponent gains some health and we need to go for... Uh, and we need to go for a second means to an end. Let's just hope they do not play face ages. Maybe I should have a relic that gets rid of face ages here as well. Probably. Twinning ritual and something in their hand. Please, opponent, do not keep us in, keep us in suspense. Seed of Wisdom, so they have two units and a sigil and four other cards. But they don't play anything, so I go for Ordnance, Ordnance Scavenger. I hope that, well, they shouldn't be running Transpose with a five-costing site in their market. We get the Life Drinker, we gain one health off of Ancient Bubble. We proc Life Force and Dead Force. All right, this is going to be it for the games, but this is not the end of the video yet. Let's head on back up top to the studio and talk about the decks some more. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. The Winch's Belcher Project versus the Aurelian Belcher Project. Which one do you think is cooler? Which one do you think is better? I mean, neither of them is really competitively playable, at least not yet. Uh, but who knows, maybe in the near or far future. Uh, but for now, this is going to be it for this video, rather lengthy one. Thank you very much for watching. And as a bonus, I will be uploading a special episode of, uh, of uh, Eternal Highlights in the next couple of days, probably on Monday, June 8th. Yes, probably sometime on Monday, June 8th, but do not hold me, uh, hold me to that date. Uh, with an additional cool, cool, very cool game with Aurelian Belcher Project. So you can look forward to that one as well. And remember, if you're enjoying the show and you like the videos, click on subscribe. All right, this is going to be it for uh, for the day. Thank you very much for watching. Kalebovich out. See you next time next week.